One, two, three. Okay, okay. <laughs> Hey guys, what's up? It's Raven. Welcome back to yet another testing things that I discovered on TikTok video. If you guys have not seen the previous ones that I did, I did testing five clothing DIY projects that I discovered on TikTok. And then I also did testing Amazon products that I discovered on TikTok. But this video is going to be testing 10 TikTok viral recipes. So these are going to be a mixture of like weird things, things that looked really good in tasty and then just like little food hacks. I've been scrolling on my For You page, discovering things, saving things. So let's just get into the first recipe. Baked pancakes. I guess basically you're making pancakes, but you're putting it in a pan and putting it in the oven, which I have literally never seen ever anywhere else in my life. Okay, so for these baked pancakes, basically you just make in regular pancake mix. There's nothing different about the recipe or the ingredients, but it's just the way you're cooking them. And from this TikTok, they said that they bake them in a sheet pan on 400 for 18 minutes. So they did theirs like very nice and flavorful looking with chocolate chips on one side and berries on the other side. I think I'm just gonna do chocolate chips. So I got these. So basically I'm just gonna mix up some box pancake mix, just however I normally would. But they were like using something like this, I think to bake them in to make like a whole family serving and then you slice it up. But I don't wanna make that much. So I think I'm just gonna do it in here and make a smaller amount. Now I guess I should probably prep my pan so it doesn't stick. So I'm just gonna take some Baker's Joy spray, spray my pan. And then just pour a thin, there wasn't really, you know, specific instructions. Is this even enough to fill this? Dang. See, this is why I didn't want to make a huge pan because I would have to use so much pancake batter. Okay, that's gonna be way too thin, I think, so I need to mix up some more. That still might be not enough, but we gonna work with it. Pancake cake, pancake cake. Then we got the oven already preheated to 400. Gonna stick that in for about 15 to 18 minutes, I think they said. And we will see what happens. I wonder if I would have used a sheet pan if it would have like flattened out. Is it done? Ew, I don't like it. <laughs> Let me get the toothpick and do the toothpick test. It's just like baking a cake. Okay, it came out clean. I guess it's done. It's not nice and golden brown on top. Okay, so here we have our pancake cake baked pancakes. Let's see, let's maybe cut a slice. This is basically just a chocolate chip cake, but made out of pancake batter. The roundness of it. Even though pancakes are round, I don't know, something about this is not sitting right with me. <laughs> Knowing that this is not a like cake cake. It's like cornbread. <laughs> okay, I made it too thick, but it is cooked and it is. <laughs> Should I put syrup at least, I guess? Cause you still, it's still just pancake batter. So like you need like butter and syrup and stuff. Actually it looks kind of nice with the toppings. Mm. It's just weird. It's just weird when you have something that's like this size and shape. Like you think it's either gonna be cake or you think it's gonna be cornbread, but then when you eat it and it's actually pancakes, it's just messing with my mind a little bit. It's not bad, it's just not good. Like it's not better than regular pancakes. I don't like it. <clears throat> I wouldn't recommend this one. I'm gonna have to give this one two out of five stars. This is how to make basically a McDonald's McGriddle breakfast sandwich, like with the little pancakes and then you have your eggs and stuff. But this is using a mason jar lid to kind of help shape it. Okay, that seems pretty simple. So basically all you need is your pancake batter. You need the lid off of a mason jar. So like just this piece 
and pop this piece out. And then to make it kind of like the McDonald's pancake McGriddle thing, it kind of has like those syrup morsels <laughs> mixed into the pancake. So they just like squirted syrup in it when they were cooking it. And then they did the same thing, like cracked an egg in here too. So we've already got everything we need. So I'm just gonna heat up this little pan with some butter, I guess. I have a feeling this is not gonna turn out. <laughs> as like so easy and perfect like theirs did, but cause I feel like it's just gonna like all spill under the edges. Got my Aunt Jemima to squirt on top, my little jar lid, which I hope is clean enough. Okay, let's see, let's see. If this works, this would be a nice little hack. So they put it down like this, like that way, and then pour your batter inside. And then put some syrup in it. Let it cook. So it's not spilling out, which is surprising. That's actually working pretty well. But then we'll see about flipping it. Now normally when you get ready to flip a pancake, you wait for all the bubbles to start popping up on the surface. But this is like kind of thicker. I feel like I'm not even gonna do the bacon and like make the whole sandwich. I just wanna see if this works and if the egg works. How am I supposed to flip this? Mm, no, okay, we got some spillage. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, okay. It's definitely spilling around the edge, but we still kept most of it in there. And then I guess you can kind of just use it like a cookie cutter and just get rid of the excess. Okay, not bad, not bad. I'm gonna take one egg and scramble it for the egg part. I think I need to flip it again or just take it out. I think we can save it. It's burning, I can smell it. Oh no, it's not that burnt. It's a little burnt, a little charred. Let that spillage cook on the other side. That's about as good as we're gonna get. I need to try another one, because I mean, you're supposed to make, you're supposed to make two of them anyway. So what did we learn? Less batter and cook it low and slow so it doesn't burn. A little bit less batter this time. up this egg. One egg even looks like it's gonna be too much for that little ring though. He was doing so good at first and I don't even know if it's gonna be cooked in the middle. One, two, three, Ooh. Okay, it's still burnt. <laughs> I've turned the heat down literally to low. Am I supposed to take the ring off now? Is that what's making it like explode? This one won't come off now. Okay, so far, not good. Don't recommend this hack. I guess I should have like greased the, cause now it's just getting stuck to here. <sighs> I feel like I could just pour a small pancake easier than this. Like just pour a little bit of batter. Like, let me show you. Just pour a small pancake. Like a silver dollar pancake. Same thing. I mean, it's not as like thick, I guess. Maybe that's why. Like this is so much easier. Same effect, same general idea. I feel like this is even more McDonald's-y, right? Cause aren't the McDonald's ones kind of thin, like a regular pancake? This syrup is causing problems. <laughs> there, now tell me that doesn't look better than that. <laughs> this one was like nice and thick though. It had a good shape going to it. I say, don't try to use the ring for the tiny pancake part. Just make a tiny pancake. I've got uh, spray olive oil. So that should probably help. Like spray this and spray this so it doesn't stick. Then we're gonna pour the egg in there. This is just one egg. Let's see if a whole egg fits. Okay, that's one whole egg. This is gonna be impossible to flip. <gasps> How the heck did they do this? Okay, here we go, all or nothing. Really? This does not work. <laughs> I can't even see how this would ever work, honestly. That was an epic fail. I knew that was gonna happen. We have our McDonald's McGriddle mini pancakes and we have our perfect circle egg. <laughs> so let's go ahead and assemble our McDonald's McGriddle. So let's see, this one looks a little better than the other one. Our perfectly shaped and sized egg to go on top. <laughs> and my version of the pancake, which honestly looks a lot better. Perfect. <laughs> Have you ever seen a more cute little circular sandwich? It's just such a nice little breakfast morsel. We just cookie cutter my eggs 
Mmm, delicious. I didn't do the bacon part, but that's okay. We don't need the bacon. We know what bacon tastes like. Here we go. Let's take a bite. See if it's raw in the middle. Mm, it's not raw. Let me not be dramatic. It tastes good. It's just pancakes and eggs. There's nothing nasty about it besides the way it looks. <laughs> and the fact that it's like burnt in some areas, but it's not too burnt. It's kind of good. But if I wanted to make this, I think I would just pour out little mini pancakes, like I said. And then if I really wanted my eggs to be in a circle, I think I would just cook it and then like cookie cutter it because putting it in here, that did not work at all, but it tastes good. Overall though, because the whole point of this recipe was like using this and making it like the perfect shape and that didn't work at all, but it does taste good. I'm gonna have to just give it two out of five stars. And this is strawberry powdered sugar. Again, something that I have never seen outside of TikTok. The girl actually says in her video that she invented it. I don't know if that's true, but let's try it out. We're gonna make the strawberry powdered sugar. All you need is freeze dried strawberries, powdered sugar, and a blender apparently, easy enough. Also, I saw on TikTok that you can make powdered sugar by just powdering regular sugar, which is just putting sugar in the blender and powdering it. So I kind of want to try that too. So let's do that first and see if that works. How does it go? There. <laughs> so I have a pretty powerful Ninja blender. Okay. <laughs> so I have a really powerful Ninja blender. So I'm just going to like take like two cups of freeze dried strawberries with one cup of powdered sugar. So let's just try to powder one cup of sugar and see if that works. If not, I have regular powdered sugar, but I've always wanted to try this. So it's a, it's a half cup, so let's see what happens. Ooh, don't breathe this. It's kind of working though, kinda. It's definitely not getting as powdery as real powdered sugar, but I don't know how long you have to do it. Oh no. It's still granular. I thought I was getting powdery. It is a little bit. I feel like I'd have to blend it for a super long time though. Okay, I'm over this. I'm scared to mess up my blender, honestly. Let's see. Two cups to one cup. <laughs> half cup, half cup. That's like one cup. Okay, since we only have like maybe a little over one cup of strawberries, I'm gonna do a half cup of powdered sugar. I guess that would be the ratio. We'll add a, a little dash of our homemade powdered sugar just for funsies. Then we blend. And it should make a beautiful light pink powdery surprise. Ooh, would it work? And it smells so good. So this is what we got, pink sugar, and it is powdery. It's just kind of clumping up on itself. It actually is really soft and powdery. And it smells really good, really strawberry-y. And it's such a pretty color. So now I'm gonna take my half-eaten pancake cake because I don't want to waste a whole other slice. But just imagine a beautiful, perfectly sliced piece of pancake cake. And then you just Dust on, oh, pretty. And especially like, I feel like if you were doing like a little girl's birthday party or a baby shower or something, add a little touch of pink everywhere. Might have just did something, cause you can really taste the strawberry. It really adds like a strawberry flavor. This is good. If you wanna add like a little strawberry sprinkle to something, Cupcakes, donuts, churros, pancakes. I recommend this. Mm. And it was actually easy to do. Two ingredients, strawberries, sugar, blender. Okay, this gets five out of five stars from me. This next viral TikTok hack is something that is truly viral. This is supposed to be healthy Sour Patch Kids just using grapes and lime juice. Okay, so this is super simple. You just need cotton candy grapes, which cotton candy grapes are a real thing. Cotton candy grapes. And then you need lime juice, but I'm gonna show you a little hack 
with the lime. Well, we're gonna test the hat because I've never tried it. Let's just take some of these little grapes and apparently you gotta slice them in half. I don't know why that's like a crucial part of it. I feel like it should taste the same either way. I feel like this is gonna taste good because I can pretty much imagine what it's gonna taste like because I've had these grapes before. They're super sweet. We all know what lime juice tastes like, but is it gonna taste like Sour Patch Kids candy literally or is it just gonna be a sweet and sour thing? That's what I wanna know. We have some sliced open grapes. Now, the other hack that I saw on TikTok was the girl in the video did it with a lemon, but I feel like it should work with a lime the same way. I'm gonna roll it to get the juices flowing. That's my own personal hack. And she just stabbed it through. Oh, limes are a little bit firmer than lemons, so that's the only thing. Stabbed it through to make a hole in the end, and then went like this to get the juice out with no seeds. Now hers was like a... <laughs> It came out so good for her, but limes are a little bit. <laughs> it's hard to squeeze a lime. Okay, maybe this just only works better on lemons because lemons are juicier. <laughs> Let's see if this actually tastes like Sour Patch Kids candy. Here we go. It does kind of. Sour Patch Kids are one of my favorite candies. I should have bought some so we could do a side-by-side -side comparison, but just without the side-by-side -side comparison, from my memory of what they taste like, these do kind of taste like the green ones. Let's get Maya's opinion. It tastes like grapes. <laughs> it tastes like grapes with lime. I swear, you have to get a lot of lime on it. Okay, try that one. Which one? That one. No. It doesn't taste like Sour Patch Kid at all to you? Like the green Sour Patch Kids. Like if you think about it really hard. <laughs> Okay, whether it really tastes like the candy or not, it is good. Would you agree it's good, Maya? Good. It, it adds a little something to just regular grapes. I've also seen where people will freeze them and make them like a little frozen snack as well, or like put them on a skewer, put lime juice on it and then freeze it. I feel like that would be like a good little summertime snack that probably kids would like. So does it taste like Sour Patch Kids? I guess not, but is it good? Yes. So I do give this, I'll give it four out of five stars. This next one is just a different way that you can use regular cake mix, but instead of making a cake, you can make cookies apparently, which I didn't know. I got the perfectly moist strawberry supreme Duncan Hines cake mix like they had in the TikTok, and then just some rich and creamy vanilla frosting to go on top of the cookies. And so instead of following the actual instructions on the back of the box, they said to just use two eggs and a half cup of oil, and that's it. So literally just dump in the whole thing of cake mix. I'm not sure how many cookies this makes. Seems like a lot though. Half cup of oil. I also saw on TikTok where they use the same kind of method to make brownies, but the cookies sounded better to me. And I've got my oven preheated to 350. So half cup of oil, two eggs, and that's literally it. I'm gonna mix this up. I thought it was kind of interesting to make like strawberry cookies, cause that's kind of something I've never, made. Cookie sheets, spray it down. And you have to scoop it to make little cookie blobs. I don't know if that's too much, probably a little too much. Hers were like nice and thick and cakey, which I guess makes sense, but I just don't want them to just like flatten out and be all like, Crispy. I like thick, chewy cookies. Comment down below. Do you like your cookies like crispy and crunchy or do you like them kind of like doughy? Cause my mom likes them as crispy and crunchy as possible and I think that's so gross. <laughs> I feel like it's not a cookie if it's like too crunchy. I mean, no shade to Chef Tony or anything, but she has some interesting food habits. Ta-da! Smells good. Now we just gotta see how they bake. 
Okay, so the cookies are ready to come out of the oven now. And of course I look at them and they spread out way too far and it almost turned into just one giant cookie, but I felt like it was okay. So I just set them aside to cool and hoped for the best. And then a little bit later after they had cooled down a little bit, I wanted to like finish them off by putting the icing and everything on there. So I just decided to pry out one of the best looking ones from the middle. I kind of had to cut it apart because they were all stuck together. And then I just put a little bit of the the store-bought icing on top and I tasted it and surprisingly even though they didn't really bake properly because I think I used too much batter the texture was really good because I don't really like like super hard crunchy cookies this had like a nice chewy texture to it actually very good and the strawberry cake flavor of course we know is good because it's just the regular cake batter but yeah all together i really liked it and the icing was a nice touch i think it might have been helpful if i chilled the batter before i scooped out the cookie dough balls because then it might have been a little bit firmer and held its shape a little bit better before i put them in the oven not sure though it might just be because of the nature of the batter they might just make flat cookies and they're still good so i would rate this like four out of five stars. Okay, you guys, I'm so mad that my mic was completely dead for this whole entire pasta chips recipe because I wish y'all could have heard the sounds of this recipe, but let me just give you a quick synopsis. Let me walk you through it. So basically, I boiled some water because I wanted to boil some bow tie pasta. From the TikTok, I could not really technically tell if they had cooked the pasta before they fried the pasta. It really didn't give a step-by-step -step tutorial, but I assumed that they had cooked the pasta normally and then strained it and then put it into the oil to fry it. So that's what I tried to do. I also had no idea how long I was supposed to fry it for, um, but I did want to go ahead and try this toothpick hack that I also saw on TikTok where she said if you put a toothpick in the oil, it'll prevent your oil from burning. So I went ahead and threw two wooden toothpicks in there. Um, I don't know, hoping for the best. So then I put in some of my pasta and I was just trying to guess on how long I should fry it. I had no idea what to look for, but I'm thinking like pasta chips, it needs to be kind of crispy. So I went ahead and did kind of like two batches. I took out one little group of pasta a little bit early because I wasn't sure, and then I let the second group cook for longer. Definitely was looking pretty weird. It wasn't looking very promising, but I just put it on a paper towel to drain, hoping for the best. After they cooled off a little bit, I tasted the first batch that I took out earlier and the texture was absolutely horrible. It basically tasted as if you made pasta and then let it sit out on your countertop for like a week and it just got super stale and chewy and hard, like was not crispy, was not crunchy, just had like a disgusting texture. So I was like, no, let me taste the other ones that I left in there longer to get crispier. And those were like really, really hard, like too crispy. So I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't know but some of them were like kind of decently crispy but overall they were still just too crunchy i'm like okay let me just try to put the seasoning on it let me try to save it so i had garlic powder oregano parsley and red pepper flakes just try to like make my own little italian seasoning blend i think i add a little bit of salt on there as well because these are supposed to be chips and this is all just based off of the visual just like me guessing off of that tiktok because it had no instructions and no recipe but i'm like pasta chips italian vibe okay so i seasoned them and then i did definitely see from the tiktok that they put grated parmesan cheese on top but i bought the wrong kind of parmesan because these were like super big shreds and so it wasn't really like sticking to the chips it was just kind of like falling off so that was an epic fail and then you're supposed to dip in marinara sauce so i got that ready and now it's time for the big taste test i took a bite and i almost died you guys they were so freaking hard and crunchy they were way too hard i feel like i almost broke my tooth not good that's why i said i'm so mad that my mic died because i wish you guys could have heard that crunch now i tasted a few other ones and some of them were kind of like decent like they were like more edible like not as hard but overall the texture in general just was not good i also had my little sister try it just to be sure and she agreed that they were definitely not good pretty much inedible she almost broke her teeth as well. Now the sad thing is the flavor combination was actually pretty good. Like the seasoning, the Parmesan cheese, like I get the idea, 
but I just don't understand how they fried them or what kind of texture they're supposed to be because I obviously did something wrong. So just based off of this TikTok and what I was able to achieve, I'm gonna have to give this zero stars. So these next two recipes are both things that you can do in the air fryer. So this first recipe is something that I've actually been making for a while now, but I saw it on TikTok. It's a salmon recipe. So if you guys saw my what I eat in a day video that I posted recently, you already saw me making this recipe. But for those of you who didn't see it, it's super easy. You just need salmon, a lemon, garlic, lemon pepper, garlic powder, salt, pepper, and olive oil. And you basically just season your salmon, pour a little bit of olive oil, and lay the lemon slices on top. And then I like to line my air fryer with foil for easy cleanup. You stick it in there, cook it for a few minutes. It's super fast and easy, and it tastes really good. So I would highly recommend this recipe if you have an air fryer and if you haven't tried it yet. And then the other idea is to make s'mores in the air fryer which I thought was really innovative because I never would have thought of doing that I'm not gonna make that one because honestly I don't really like s'mores okay so this one is super simple it's making a quesadilla in the toaster so you literally just need a tortilla and cheese or if you want to get fancy and put other like uh, things inside like I like to make Zaya a pizza quesadilla by adding pepperoni slices to it um, And actually I have tried this hack I tried it this morning because I was packing Zaya's school lunch and I was trying to think of something to pack instead of a sandwich And I was like, oh, I can try that hack. So I do know That it does work at least I tried it with a small quesadilla, but I'm gonna try it with these uh, big tortillas and then of course you just put whatever cheese or whatever toppings, like a good amount on one side, like that. And then to jazz it up, you get your pepperonis and just lay a few pepperonis in there as well. Now, for a real pizza quesadilla, you would put like marinara sauce. I didn't trust it with putting it in the toaster because I just felt like it was all gonna bubble out and spill out and just make a huge mess in the toaster, so. I would not recommend putting marinara sauce in it. Then the way you fold it, this is what I learned from the TikTok. You gotta go like this, you're making a little pocket. And then you fold this in half. So then when you pick it up, it's like a little purse. <laughs> a little quesadilla purse. And it keeps the sides in so nothing spills. And it's the perfect little, like, wow. And this actually fits perfectly. I used a small tortilla for Zaya's, so it wasn't this big, but this, fits perfectly in a toaster. And then literally set your toaster to a little bit like longer time than you would normally do for regular toast. And then just make sure it like really gets down in there. And then you just toast it. And it takes what, like five minutes or whatever? Pops out and it's like nice and toasted on the outside and gooey on the inside. You'll see, please hold. Basically after just a couple of minutes of putting it in the toaster, it comes out nice and toasted on the outside and the cheese is all melted and everything's nice and warm on the inside and nothing like spills or explodes because of the way that the tortilla is folded. So it actually works really, really well. You can put whatever kind of toppings you want or whatever on the inside and it's actually really good, super fast and easy and it really works. I think this is a good idea, it tastes good and I definitely give it five out of five stars. And this last recipe is not really a recipe, it's just like a little hack or an idea of something that you can do differently. Basically, you just take your little Starbucks Frappuccino drink and put it in the freezer, but don't let it completely freeze. And apparently it's supposed to turn into like the perfect slushy Frappuccino mixture. I never thought to do this, so I thought this was a good idea. It says chilled coffee drink on the bottle. Shake well and enjoy. Serve chilled or over ice. It does not say put it in the freezer anywhere on this bottle, but apparently it's really good if you put it in the freezer, but you have to be careful because this is in a glass bottle. And if you let it completely freeze, it's probably going to explode in your freezer. So you just have to freeze it up to like a certain point and then take it out and shake it. And then it's supposed to get slushy, like a real Frappuccino. This is the almond milk one, by the way, cause I am dairy free. So I don't know the exact timing. I think I'm just gonna put it in and then keep checking on it every few minutes to just make sure it doesn't explode. So I'm gonna go put this in the freezer. And I'm going to literally set a reminder on my phone because otherwise I will forget and I will come back to a mess. Okay, so I had this in the freezer for about, I wanna say like three hours. 
I thought it was gonna be shorter than that. Is it even frozen yet? Okay, I think I took it out right at the right time. So yeah, I would say like it actually takes like three hours and I actually don't think that this would explode even if it did freeze solid. I guess only carbonated drinks explode. I thought stuff in glass, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> that really icy parts are like around the edge. I don't know if y'all can see that but it is like slushy, especially around the edge. It doesn't look as perfect in the cup. It looks a little bit too watery, but you can probably see the consistency, like kind of slushy, kind of frappuccino-ish. Maybe I could have left it in there a bit longer, but the real icy part is like still stuck in there. There we go. And I don't know if the almond milk version freezes differently than the normal version. There we go. Now you can kind of see the consistency. So I guess you just gotta time it perfectly right to where like it doesn't just freeze solid, but it's not too liquidy and it like turns into like a true frappuccino. I already know what this tastes like, but let's see. Honestly, it's pretty nice. I mean, it tastes the same, obviously, it's just a different texture, but it is like a pretty nice, like gives you like a blended frozen drink texture, just like a normal Frappuccino from Starbucks. So if you really like that frozen drink blended part of a Frappuccino and you tend to buy these, I mean, I would recommend this hack because it works pretty well. The only hard part about it is that you can't just like keep these in the freezer. I mean, I guess you could. Maybe if you like kept them in the freezer, let them freeze solid and then maybe just take it out and let it thaw out a little bit before you try to drink it. So due to the timing issue, I would just give this like mm, four out of five stars. So yeah guys, those were 10 crazy recipes that I found on TikTok. I definitely discovered some new tasty stuff and also discovered some not so good stuff. Let me know in the comments down below which one you're gonna be trying. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.